What's up everybody? This is the second video I'm doing on this Trans Am. This is my 76 Trans Am. It's a factory 455 four-speed car, a real starlight black car. Um, one thing I didn't address in the first video is I did send out and get the PHS documentation for this car. So I know for sure it is a 455 four-speed car. I learned all the options it should have and uh, what it shouldn't have and it's pretty much the way I found it is pretty close to way, the way it left the factory with the exception, like I said, of these decals being wrong. So today, not really, in this video, I am going, let me shut this off. I am going to be putting the speakers in the car now because I'm putting the old school Alpine cassette deck in. So I'm putting new Alpine six by nines in the back and five and a halfs in the doors. I think they're five and a halfs. And then I'm gonna take the door panels out. I already got them out. Take the door panels apart, meaning the bottom plastic pieces, clean them. I'm gonna paint them with a special paint to make them look nice again before I put the door speakers in and uh, get that all wrapped up and ready for the car stereo installation. So um, let's take a look at what I'm gonna do to these lower door panels and what I'm gonna use to paint them. Um, I've done a lot of major car restorations um, like concourse car work so some of the paint i'm going to be using is stuff that i use and the shop where i do my cars uses um, on interior plastic pieces to make it look somewhat factory again as close as you can with when you're refinishing plastic like dash pieces or you know trim parts inside your car that are plastic so um, i'm going to get that stuff out now and show you what i'm doing Robert Mendez of Mendez Motorsports, otherwise known as Bobo Mendez to his friends, is a legendary race car engine builder, um, very well known in the Mopar world. He's done a lot of engines for me. He did my 346 pack, 446 pack, he's done GTO motors for me, 426 Hemi, he's a pretty much an expert on 426 Hemis. So I have no problem handing over my 455 Pontiac motor to him. You know, normally the injector bungs are down here. Yeah. But this is going to have a Pro Charger on it. And you need to cool the intake air, you know? So when I run it on E85, I'm going to... The injectors will be up here. It'll be injecting directly into the top of the runner so it's got that much more time to cool the charge. Okay. You know? Man, it has to be another eight second car or yeah, I hope so. Yeah. It should be an eight second car with a that I can drive, you know. The block is looking great. We're using a Eagle Stroker kit for the 455. It's gonna bump that stroke up and make this thing 470 cubic inches going to be a torque monster he says probably putting out somewhere around 600 foot pounds of torque so I'm excited to get the heads going now I've got 6x heads going on here to replace the old 6h heads um, which a lot of guys do on these cars and we're going to bring up the torque and horsepower for sure but this should be a great running motor I'm not going too radical with this motor I just want a nice driving car something we can have fun in no race car, I don't want to be breaking stuff and just getting ridiculous with the numbers, but it should be right where I want it. A far cry from the factory 200 horsepower, you know, 455. So check out some of the parts here and uh, I'm excited to get to the next step with this thing. out when's the last time you saw one of these so I used to be an Alpine dealer I worked for a big Alpine dealer I should say back in 92 93 94 
during the big bass craze, all the mini trucks were coming in and custom rides, getting all these crazy stereo systems we would build. So I've been a diehard Alpine guy, you know, since back in the day. It took me forever to locate one of these, a nice clean uh, cassette pullout. Um, if they do hit eBay, they kind of go for a small fortune. So I finally got a nice four channel unit and I was thinking of putting a old school Pontiac AM FM in here and maybe even the A-Track. But I said, you know what? I want to see those green buttons again. I haven't seen them in <laughs> decades. Uh, I always love the look of these when they're lit up. So I'm going to put the head unit in here as well as new door speakers. Um, I got the door panel off on this side and the other side. That one's got some nasty paper all over it. So I'm probably going to try to replace that with you know, the factory style, uh, you know, paper or plastic that these used to have. I think they, they still sell it. And uh, I've got new, brand new Alpine five and a halfs, I think, five and a quarters. It's been so long since I've done car stereo, but I checked the door panels and they will fit nicely. Um, I'm gonna do Alpine five and a quarters and then six by nines in the back. It's got these cheapo urban audio who knows when these were put in, but they're pretty lame, I think. I never really heard of them. So I'm gonna ditch those and just put a nice Alpine system all around. No amplifiers, nothing crazy, because once the new motor's in this car, you're probably not gonna wanna hear music too often, but when I do, I wanna play a lot of old cassettes and uh, old 70s and 80s rock. You know, I've got a Trans Am, so why not? All right, like I was saying, nine times out of 10, I would have replaced these bottom door panels with ones that weren't cut out, you know, years ago by somebody. Unfortunately, they were cut out. But since I'm putting that stereo in, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it and put speakers in the doors and have four speakers in that car um, and hopefully get some decent sound. What I'll probably end up doing is painting these lower parts um, with SEM black. I think it's a trim black. I've used it many times on Mopars and it makes it look like brand new factory black plastic. So these aren't in bad shape. They just need to be cleaned up. But even if I wash them good, they're still gonna kind of look a little faded, you know? They got some little surface scratches going on, but I mean, if I paint those and then clean the tops up, I think it's gonna look pretty awesome. So I'll show you the paint I'm gonna use and then um, I'll do a before and after of what these are gonna look like. All right, everybody. So um, what I'm gonna do first is wash down those plastic lower door panels um, and try to get any oily substances off of the plastic so the paint will stick nicely. Um, then I'm gonna do a light misting of SEM adhesion promoter Okay, to make that paint stick to that plastic a little better than it normally would by just spraying the paint directly to the plastic. Um, and then I'm gonna use SEM Landau Black. And that's a, a nice black that makes interior trim parts, you know, look like newer factory black plastic pieces did back in the day. And there's actually another SEM Black I use as well. I can't remember the name of the color, but and what I want you to know is I'm not using trim black. Trim black is amazing stuff, but I only use trim black on metal pieces. So like when I restore a CUDA, there's metal window trim, like in the back and in the front of the car, like thin metal strips. That's when I'll use a trim black on the metal pieces. That'll be like a nice satiny black and not gloss. So trim black is not what I'm using for interior plastics. So just know it's it's made by SEM and Landau black will work just fine. You know, I'm gonna wash them first with some good old Wesley's bleach white and some hot water. I'm gonna scrub them clean just in case there's any old armor all or, you know, any type of oily substances, substances on these. I want the paint to lay on as nice as possible. Man, look at that. <laughs> Whoever cut these holes, I feel, feel sorry for them. They're not a very good uh, 
hole cutter or whatever the hell you want to call it. But anyway, um, I'm going to try to take these off next. I think it's pretty, pretty easy, but I'm going to paint these up now and uh, after I wash them. Coating them once again, can't hurt. Because if there's armor on these, ain't no way you're gonna get paint stick. And word to the wise, if you're ever working with armor all, basically I hate this stuff. I loved it when I was a kid. I'd do all my dad's interiors, but it really doesn't clean. It just shines up any dirty grime that's all over your seats if you don't clean them. But if that stuff gets in the air and someone's trying to paint a car, they're probably gonna kill you. So do not spray armor all near paint booths or any shop that's got a paint booth and they paint nice cars. You won't find any armor all being sprayed in those places. All right, they're pretty clean. Like I said, I used basically scalding hot water out of the hose to uh, wash them down with and Wesley's bleach white. So I'm gonna towel dry them, get my blower out, air dry them with the compressor and uh, probably do some painting in a little while before the sun goes down. All right, don't make fun of my table. My garage is filled with cars and stuff and I'm not about to clean it all out. So what we're gonna do first is use our adhesion promoter for plastics. We do one light coat just a light one, let it flash for five minutes, then do a full wet coat. Not soaking wet, you just kinda lay it on lightly. After about 15 minutes, it'll be ready for paint. And then we're gonna do the dusting with our SEM Landau Black. So now I'm gonna do my, my light coat. do one at a time hit it from all angles get the edges move on to number two I may go in and get those pockets a little deeper keep the can nice and straight by the way these were nice and dry feeling when I I clean them and aired them out for an hour wiped them all down I could let that sit for five minutes I blew them with air, used paper towels to dry them, and they felt nice and dry to the touch. They didn't feel oily, they seemed like they're absolutely ready for paint. So, hey, we can only hope, right? If I mess them up, it's not the end of the world because they've got big speaker holes cut in them, right? This is just an extra step that's nice to take to ensure that it does not flake off later. My daughter's gonna be sitting on the other side. You know, she's gonna be knocking into it, bringing toys and cassette tapes to play. So it's gonna get knocked around and hit and scratched. I'm hoping with this, it's gonna stay on there and the paint's not gonna flake off. This one's gonna go on a little bit, a little heavier. We're just dusting it on, nothing crazy. All right, let's do this. Test it out a little bit. I'm just gonna hit my edges. All right, paint's dry. You can see they look pretty good. Looks like uh, newer new black plastic as opposed to uh really old 70s plastic that's faded might be hard to tell in the video but they're nice and rich looking now not glossy at all just a nice nice sheen to it like it's factory 
black plastic again. Should look great once it's on the car. All right, you can see this door panel is looking good. It did look like this one, just old and had that white, you know, dry look. So I just took cleaning wipes, not Armor All wipes, or Armor All brand, but just cleaning wipes, not that oily crap. And you can see it's full of dirt and stuff over the years, so I'm cleaning it as best I can. It's looking nice again. It's not it's not wet anymore, it's dry, but you can see a lot of that dirty white look is gone. All right, check it out. Looks pretty good. Bottoms painted look really nice. And I clean the tops, put some kind of like leather conditioner just to make them look nicer again. I'm gonna try to find some stuff for vinyl later, but it worked for now. But they look a lot better than they did. Had to bring it inside, it was too sunny, but you can see how they like, look alike, like a darker appearance now, just a richer black. And uh, I think they'll look great once they're back in the car. All right, they're ready to go back on, but unfortunately, the cat whiskers are messed up, you know, and I totally forgot. I should have ordered them. You can see this one's coming off, so. I don't think I have them yet. I'll have to look through the garage and see if I did order them at some point, but I'll get those ordered up tonight. So at least I can put those on and have uh, have those new, but man, they look, look a lot nicer now. That's for sure. Pretty happy with the results of the paint. A lot of you probably watched the last video and said, you know, that car looks pretty nice. Why the heck is he gonna paint it? Well, in person, when you get up on this thing, you know, you can tell it's, definitely an old driver quality paint job it ain't bad but buffing it out might make it better but this antenna definitely has to go so we're going to be patching that hole i don't know why somebody did that right on the quarter panel but um you know we're gonna weld that up so why not just take the whole car down and paint it black again and make it look um as good as i can especially since it's getting all new graphics and everything um, and the rear window, you know, something is leaking. There's a little water that will trickle into the trunk at some point. So like I said, I've got a new, a whole new back glass I'm gonna put in there and then we'll reseal that. But uh, other than that, the car looks really nice for, for now, at least uh, to drive it this year again. And then um, it's all gonna be taken down and repainted once we do the motor swap.